Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. As ever, we've got a whole heap of tech that's launched for you this week. And as well as that, Cy and Oliver, they're over at Eurobike in Germany, which is a humongous trade show. So they're gonna be bringing you the latest in tech from there too. Seeing as it's the week of Eurobike, and well, I'm not on the ground there, but Eurobike has all the hottest and latest tech releases and launches. Cy and Oliver, they're gonna bring you now some of the nicest things which they've seen. Thanks, John. We've had an amazing few days here at Eurobike. It's been loads of fun as well. Yeah. And we've seen loads of absolutely awesome tech. Yeah, we've had to hunt for it though. In total, we think we've walked between us 88 kilometers over the last three days up and down the exhibition halls, but we have uncovered some proper gems, haven't we? A lot of which you might already have seen on the video that went up on GCN and on GCN Tech, but there is still more to come as well, so make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, and it's fair to say that most of the big bike brands have not been here this year, but I don't consider that to be a bad thing because it's meant that there's a load of space been freed up for smaller brands, and I've been really happy to see loads of things that Quite frankly, I've just never heard of before. Yeah, Airstream, for me, it's an Austrian brand. It's actually been around for 10 years. i would never heard of it before, but the bikes looked absolutely fantastic. And then another one, this is a completely new company, Except, which is a brand that's kind of worked out a way of creating completely monocoque, custom carbon frames. They've patented the technique behind it, and that'll be something we should look into more. Something that caught my eye was a bike called the Plus One from a brand Vialo. Now they're a small boutique British brand and it, I really liked just, well, the firstly the paint job, but also the fact that it was a really functional bike. So you've got 650B wheels, hidden mounts, hidden frame protectors, and it's a really neat one by drivetrain. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad you're talking one by actually, because now John Cannings isn't here, I can fully go to town. One by has been <laughs> for me, the kind of hidden story of Eurobike. Firstly, 3T and their Strada. So that was the bike that caused quite a lot of controversy last year, an aero road bike that could not be used with a front derailleur. It had to have a one by drivetrain. They, 3T weathered the storm, and then a year later, they've released the Douai, which is the same bike, but with a front derailleur mount. And I was, I was kind of struggling to get my head around this because I'm a bit of a fan of one by. And, uh, and apparently, according to Gerard Vrooman, uh, the designer, he said that they had always intended to have a two-by model as well, which, which left me a little bit reeling and questioning the whole future of one-by, but we don't have to question that hard because Rotor have launched in there with their one-by-13 drivetrain, which is proper cool, so make sure you check that one out over on the GCN video a bit earlier. Yeah, and also, I was really interested to see the Merida Warp TT bike that has been designed specifically so that you can actually turn it into a one-by bike, one-by TT bike, to make it more aerodynamic if you're on a flatter stage. Right. You can go up hills on, on a one-by bike as well, Holly. <laughs> you can. Uh, no, but it's true because they, again, Vrooman was saying that the 3T Strada Due is eight watts slower than the one-by version. So they've, they've produced a two-by bike, but he said, yeah, you know, buy it if you want, but it's eight watts slower. That's incredible. Yeah. It's front derailleur and double chainring, eight yeah. watts. Yeah, aero is another thing here, isn't it, really? A, quite a big trend at Eurobike. Yeah, well, more specifically, we need to talk about aeropods. We should probably explain aeropods. Yeah, so <laughs> aeropods are basically a way of turning your bike into a wind tunnel. And we've got one right here. Yeah. So this is an example. This is called the Notio Connect. But there are several companies at Eurobike this year who've brought out similar products. So it's definitely something that's really about to take off, we feel. Now, what this has the power to do is turn your bike into a wind tunnel. And that means that we're, we're bringing aerodynamic testing, wind tunnel testing, to the mass market. Yeah, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Ollie, but the way it works is by effectively measuring the wind speed up front with that little kind of pitot tube, and then it pairs with your power meter, and from that, it can then work out- Your drag coefficient. Exactly, mm. so the possibilities for GCN Does Science are almost endless. Oh. Have we, we got glasses? Science glasses. Where no, I don't know where mine have gone. Back to you, John. 88 kilometers of walking. Wow, they've been busy, haven't they? Hope they've had some nice comfy footwear on, otherwise they'll have some blisters. Anyway, more tech for you later on.
Now, I must say, I do get a little bit lonely in here from time Aww. to time. So I've brought in Emma, I've gone and grabbed her uh, politely, and I've got her in for this little section here because I think she's gonna be a great little asset for this. Thanks, John. Well, I would have liked to come to the whole tech show, but sadly, I am not qualified because I know very little about tech, as you will have probably gathered. But this is exciting to me. This is about <laughs> bike fit and comfort, so. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk briefly though. Uh, last week, I asked the question, which of these key components would someone sacrifice if they were gonna buy themselves a new bike? Would it be the weight? Would it be the comfort? Or would it be aerodynamics? Uh, what would you go for if you had to lose one? Uh, depends on racing or training. So training, I would definitely sacrifice weight. So heavy training bike. Yeah. Train heavy, race light. Um, and if it was racing, then in terms of sort of fluffy comfort, I'd sacrifice that. But it would depend on, I'm not talking about comfort in terms of injury. So yeah. anything that is an injury discomfort problem or a saddle issue, yeah. do not like saddle issues. <laughs> so uh, yes, that's uh, that's how I'd yeah. yeah. Aerodynamics, I don't, th I mean, if we're talking body position, I think that's always quite important, yeah. but the bike, uh, less so. Yeah. Anyway, let's have a look then at what some of the viewers have said, because there was quite a split decision really amongst yeah. them. Uh, everyone has their own thoughts on these things, and that's what we absolutely love. First up, Sweet, who uh, says, if, a, if it's a bike for training, scrap weight, which, yeah, spot on. Uh, if it's a bike for racing, scrap comfort, which, yeah. I mean, I yeah, there's certain bits of comfort, you know, you end up forgetting that your legs hurt or yeah. you know, you're focusing on other things, yeah. don't you, sometimes? Yeah. Maybe it's good if you have a, have a sore bum from your saddle because then the pain of your legs is less relevant. That's true, actually. I've I'm never thought sure. about it that way. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a great yeah. way. Of not sure you want to put nails through your saddle or anything like that. It's bad no, enough anyway. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, Cyclops 70, sacrifice aero. The biggest aero difference is the rider, and comfort means uh, they can ride further. If it's painful, I'm less likely to ride. Good point. Spot on. And it's important to remember that, like most people, want to ride their bike to ride their bike, and they don't really care whether they go fast. Exactly. Like if you're not racing. I don't. No, just enjoy yeah. riding yeah, a bike. Comfort be, is very important. Yeah, just want to be so comfortable on the bike because if you're not, you're not going to want to ride. Uh, Gordon Moat, lightweight, they'll go to the bathroom before their ride. Aero, they'll wear more form fitting kit. Comfort, yes, please. They've obviously watched your video, haven't they, about yes, going to the toilet? About going to the loo, very important. Yeah. yeah. If you struggle with that, drink lots of coffee. Yes, and do some star jumps. <laughs> and I think, I think the going to the toilet thing is partly comfort and partly weight. Yeah. If you ever had to ride your bike needing the loo desperately, oh, it's pretty horrible. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. These things are important, Yeah. even though they're not often discussed. <laughs> Gino, uh, don't need lightweight. I live in the Netherlands. Ooh, what do you reckon? I think... it's not. That's not strictly true, no, is it? No, because weight is... This is a common misconception that weight's only important for climbing, but every time you accelerate, weight's important. So every corner you come out of, and if you're racing crits, for example, and you have to slow down on every corner, um, that makes a big difference. But I agree that trundling around uh, without too much technical stuff, weight's not that important. No, no. Especially if you're not jumping around, you know, accelerating, decelerating, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, Dexy, finally, comfort goes for me. 25 millimeter plus tires will do the job on any frame. Don't let Simon Richardson hear you say that. He'll uh, preach to you that 28s or yeah. above are the option I agree. to go for. I love my 28s, yeah. I can run quite Another a low one. tire pressure. <laughs> Very comfortable, yeah, low tire pressure. I'm still happy with 25s, 100 PSI, but yeah, cool. I'm slowly converting. I am, I am slowly converting. Anyway, this week then, let's talk about how long it takes for a rider to become comfortable on a new bike. Because a friend of mine at the weekend, he asked me, how do I manage to switch between so many different bikes and how do I remain comfortable? And it's not quite as simple as that, is it? No, I think it's quite difficult actually. And, and Back in the day, I would have been racing, I'd have had a training bike and a racing bike that were set up exactly the same. So I'd put them next to each other and, and adjust everything to be exactly the same with, you know, spirit level and a tape measure and then ride them, you know, around the block one after the other until I couldn't tell the difference. Nowadays, I get to ride lots of different bikes for GCM, which is really cool, but they're totally different. So they're different brands, different geometries, different wheel sizes. I have a Canyon with 650B and a Trek with 700s, an Orbea with 700s. So, um, there is no way they're going to feel the same. No. And I haven't even honestly got the position quite right on all of them yet, uh, just because I just haven't quite got around to it, which is awful. But um, the thing the thing that I notice most is, is um, not saddle height unusually, but it's handlebar width and the size of the hoods, because that um, feels to me like safety quite a lot and mm -hmm. the, the sort of cornering feel. But um, yeah, with, with, with 
two bikes that are the same frame or similar, I think I think it still takes quite a while. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think for personally for me, it takes quite a while because psychologically, I'm always thinking that something's not right, mm. and that's that's actually a really big hurdle yeah. for some people to. You said to, it takes you like six months. Yeah, up to six months it has done in the past. Yeah, I've been you know constantly fiddling around with things. Um, you know, saddle cleat position for me is one. The saddle yeah. position and cleat position is two things which yeah. I just, I mean, if I was given a centimetre longer stem or centimetre shorter, I'm not that fussed about that. It's well, more see, about the saddle that. height and the and yeah. the cleats. But I guess, you do know, I've had a bike fit and they told me everything was spot on. So I was really happy with that. Do, do you find that when if you change shorts, for example, you have to change your saddle height? Because I I know riders that have, if you get shorts with a thicker chamois, they have to put their saddle yeah, height. Yeah, I have noticed the difference, yeah, yeah with a couple of yeah. different chamois. And, I tend to want a chamois which is really basic, you know, yeah. not not huge differences. You get some that have different density of the foam, that kind of yeah. thing, and then it becomes, you know, an absolute yeah. nightmare yeah. swapping between shorts. But I guess let's have a couple of polls then. Mm -hmm. Let's have one. Have you had a bike fit up there? Vote yes or no. And then we're going to put a few options up there for how long it takes you to get used to a new bike or swapping between that kind of thing. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see those results, wouldn't yeah. it? See how yeah. long it takes the viewers. Next week we'll have another hot topic. So last week at the Tour de France, I got up close and personal with the brand new Specialized S-Works Venge from the Peter Sagan collection. That's right, he has his own collection of bikes. How cool is that? Anyway, this bike is a significant improvement in my eyes over the previous model, the Venge Vias. And not only in looks, because I think the other one didn't really look that great. Instead, it's actually saved 460 grams over its predecessor, which quite frankly is astonishing. Uh, now the majority of that weight saving has actually come from the frame, so 260 grams. And then the handlebar setup has actually saved over 100 grams compared to the previous model, which again is a big old weight saving. And visually, well, it looks good too. But it's not all about that lightweightness because, get this, it's eight seconds faster over 40 kilometer. I mean, that is at zero degree yaw, so head on into the wind, but apparently out on the road it is faster still too. So yeah, there's weight savings, it's faster. What's not to like about that? As for the color of it, well, I think it looks great, but a couple of his teammates and Peter himself were maybe a little bit unsure, and believe it or not, Peter even asked me what I thought of it, and I said, it looks spot on. So go ahead, race it, maybe win a stage. Oh, and he did. So uh, there it is, got the Canning's tick of approval. Now, sticking with Aero, Trek have officially announced their new disc brake bike, their Madon. Now, I got to check out John Degenkolb's new bike, so if you haven't already seen that, make sure you do give it a watch. But what's so cool about this bike for me is that it comes with ISO speed. What's that though? Well, basically, it's a system where you can adjust the compliance of the frame. So basically, adjusting it using a little slider underneath the top tube to reduce road buzz, something which a lot of Aero bikes do tend to give you quite a harsh ride. So if you can adjust it a little bit, just to give you maybe a little bit of a softer ride, that gets a big thumbs up from me. Now that bike also features a new handlebar and stem setup. So the previous Madon had a one-piece integrated bar and stem, so you're limited there with any adjustment, whereas this one has a two-piece setup, so you can actually rotate the bars around if you so wish. And the cables though, they still remain fully internal and hidden away, which always looks fantastic on a bike keeping it nice and integrated too. Underneath the bottle cage on the down tube, there's actually a plastic insert which houses the battery inside of the frame. So using the new seat post system with the ISO speed, it basically wasn't able to be done. But in this case, they've managed to accommodate that battery really well. I must also mention the paintwork on that bike. Now there's red ones, but the most cool of all has to be the white pearlescent finish with red detailing. I even had riders from other teams tell me how fantastic they thought it looked. So who am I to argue with that? And yeah, Deggy, he's one lucky bike rider. So another new bike this week is this from BMC, the Time Machine Road. And amazingly, this is the first aero road bike that BMC have launched. So they're a little bit late to the party, but they have made an impressive entrance nonetheless. Now the tube set is designed to be a perfect blend of aerodynamics, weight, and stiffness. 
and built within these tubes is something I've not seen before. So BMC have partnered up with Elite, who are renowned, of course, for their bottle cages and water bottles, and have integrated water bottles into the frame, therefore giving a slightly more aerodynamic profile to the bike. Now, don't worry if you don't want to actually use those bottle cages. You can put standard ones on there, but I imagine at a detriment to the aerodynamics. Now, this is what is super interesting, is that the bike has actually got an integrated storage pouch, which can be removed if you are racing a UCI event. And that fills the void in between the seat tube and the down tube. So inside of that, you can actually put a few spare little items, which I think is a nice little addition to such a cool looking bike. Sticking with integration, have a look at that on the fork leg they've made an aerodynamic cover for that disc brake caliper just to try and cheat the wind a little bit more efficiently. And as well as that, they've also got a brand new handlebar stem and seat post, which have all been designed with aerodynamics in mind. Now, personally, I think that is a big old statement to enter the aero road bike game. Well done, BMC. Now, another new bike that was under wraps a literal wrap at the opening stage of the Tour de France is this from Ridley. It's the brand new Ridley Noah Fast. This one's with disc brakes. It does also come with a rim brake version too. Many of you will be happy to hear of. Now the bike itself has been completely redesigned from its predecessor. And then down there on the fork legs at the front, you can see a couple of little wings, they call them, behind the dropout. So basically that's gonna smooth the wind flow or any turbulence coming off of the front hub. Now keeping it nice and smooth also is the addition of fully internal cables. And Ridley claim that you can actually change a standard Bowden cable or an electronic cable in under two minutes. Something which home mechanics, I'm sure, will be jumping with joy because some of these bikes with internal cables can take quite a while to fish out from the internals of a frame. Oh, and this was the first time that the Campagnolo disc brakes have been used at the Tour de France. I seem to remember Adam Hansen using Campagnolo disc brakes at one of the Grand Tours last year. Uh, but yeah, apparently Greipel's a big fan of them, so there we go, a first. Now, finally, with aero bikes, there is a new TT bike from Merida, and I was lucky enough to check it out. So while stalking the mechanics here at the Tour de France, I've just come across this, a brand new bike, Merida Time Warp TT. I don't know much about it, to be perfectly honest with you, because, well, this is the first time I've seen it, and the mechanics are working away frantically in the background, building them in time for the Tour de France. Now, interestingly, one of the biggest differences between this and the previous model is here between the top tube and seat tube joint here. So we've got it nicely filled in. And I particularly like down here between the down tube and seat tube is where the DI2 uh, settings junction box is actually placed in there. Uh, rear derailleur as well, that's using a direct mount hanger this time. And also importantly, for me at least, using vertical dropouts as opposed to rearward facing horizontal, which for a mechanic in the heat of a moment during a time trial, puncture can be an absolute nightmare. So that gets a big thumbs up from me. And the stem and front end of the bike does look super sleek too. I particularly like it. It does look really aerodynamic and super fast compared to the old one, which looked slightly more industrial compared to this one. Now I reported last week on Mitchelton Scott using some new Pirelli P0 tubular tires at the Tour de France. And I was lucky enough to get my grubby little hands on one and I was able to check it out. So here we are. Just managed to get my grubby little hands on one of these, a Pirelli P0 Velo tubular tire. Now Mitchelton Scott, they are gonna be using them for the first time in competitive racing during this year's Tour de France. Now I don't know a lot about these tires, admittedly, but the tread pattern, it's quite minimalistic and it's got quite a cool look to it, to be perfectly honest. And of course, it's got a cotton base layer there for the glue to adhere nicely onto the rim bed. It's pretty lightweight too. The actual inner tube, it does remind me of another, another brand out there as well too. But uh, it's always interesting to see another tyre manufacturer burst onto the market. Nice. Now, I love a pair of cycling shoes. I've got loads of them, nearly as many as I have bikes. But these are Mark Cavendish's new kicks for the Tour de France. Apparently, he's taken inspiration from the football boots used by footballer Ronaldo back at the 1998 World Cup. And well, they certainly do stand out, don't they? I'm not sure how comfortable they're going to be with that kind of knitted sock upper, but well, if they're good enough for Cav, then they're good enough for most of us, let's face it. Let me know though what you think of them down there in the comments. Are Cav shoes hot or not? 
Now, if you want the bling of the bling with home trainers, then you need this. This is the Furo Pista from Elite. And yeah, as you can see, it doesn't look like a standard home trainer at all, does it? Instead, it uses wood, it uses glass. It looks, basically, it wouldn't look out of place in your living room or your office or who knows where. Uh, it's not the sort of thing, really, where you would want to get it dirty. Or certainly I wouldn't, not at a price tag of about $15,000. Now, it can be linked up to your virtual training apps too. So if you are in the market for one and you've got some cash to splash, maybe that one's for you. Now, something a bit more conventional when it comes to home training, but new nonetheless, and from Wahoo, over to Sai at Eurobike. Wahoo have got a whole load of new stuff on their stand, starting with the legendary kicker, which has just been redesigned, not externally, which is a good thing in my book, but internally. So we've now got a bigger flywheel, it's now 16 pounds, so that's very roughly about eight kilos, and they reckon it'll generate up to 2,500 watts resistance. Uh, and then also they've redesigned the internals, so they say now it's virtually silent, to the extent where technically you could use it in a library. Up front, we've got the kicker climb. Now, we saw that last year, Lloyd had a good look at it, but just in case you didn't know, uh, it basically changes the gradient of your bike. So anything from minus 10 to plus 20%. So for that, that real Zwift experience, but then another new bit of tech, which I love, it's just up here. So this is called the Kicker Headwind, okay? So this is a smart fan, and you can set it in one of two ways. So you can either sync it up with, uh, with your trainer, so via Amp Plus, and you can set it so that it will increase the wind speed depending on the speed that you're riding at. So basically, the faster you go, the more cooling you get, just like the real world, or you can actually sync it up with your heart rate strap via Amp Plus, and so the harder you try, the more wind it's going to kick out. Not quite finished yet with Wahoo because there is this, which is the new Kicker Core. So this is a brand new direct drive trainer and it retails for about $300 less than the Kicker, but it goes in a little bit higher up than the Snap, which is where you keep your back wheel on. So it's a little bit more basic uh, in some respects, but not many, it's fair to say. The flywheel is a little bit smaller, so 12 pounds, which very roughly is about six kilos. Uh, and there's a little bit of assembly required out of the box. There's no cassette on there. But the important things, like the internals, are the same. So again, this one is now virtually silent as well. So library proof, that all important characteristic. Now something just as cool, and in my opinion, a real icon of Tour de France history, are these two new jerseys from Prenda Cyclismo. Now they've relaunched or reissued those jerseys of the Peugeot BP Michelin squad, of course famous for having British rider Tom Simpson, as well as Eddie Merckx in the squad, and also the Lavi Claire jersey. Both of them have a huge place in cycling history. I totally love them. Oh, hang on a minute, Cy and Oliver, they want to talk about bike fitting, something they've seen at Eurobike, so they must have been watching that segment earlier. Over to you guys. Right, before we leave Eurobike, and we really mean leave Eurobike because we're about to miss our flight, uh, we did want to tell you about SmartFit. Yeah, SmartFit is a company that's actually won a gold award here at Eurobike, so they're well deserving of some recognition. Now, they've devised a couple of systems to do with bike fitting that could really change the way we all buy bikes in the future. So the first thing is an online tool that you can use if you buy a bike through an online retailer. And it enables you to predict the size of the frame that you're going to use by, it's going to, well, it's going to be best for you, using some complex algorithms based on your height and your arm length and your leg length. So that's all you need to do is measure your arms, legs and height. Yeah, and this is based on loads and loads of data that they've collected and combining with some maths. But it means it's, much, it's a much more accurate way of doing it rather than, and takes the guesswork out, rather than if you do it just by looking at sort of a geometry chart. And you also told me that you've been laser beamed this morning. <laughs> yeah, so the other system they have is something that they would actually put in a bike shop. But the amazing thing about this compared to any other sort of bike fitting or sizing tool is how quick it was. So I had to stand on a platform and then they measured me with lasers. Cool. And what this did was it measured my arm length, it measured my height, and it measured my inseam leg. And in doing that, it was able to tell me what size bike I want, but not only what size, within a specific brand or model I was interested in, it could tell me the saddle height I should set on that bike, and the stem length, and the stack height. Now, did it work? Did you test it out? So, I actually did test it out by saying, my actual bike that I currently have, because I know how that's set up, and I've been bike fitted to that in the past, 
and it came out astonishingly accurate. Like the saddle height that it said was like about three or four mil out, only three or four mil out of what I actually have. Now that could just be down to the fact that I'm wearing jeans and I'm not wearing cycling shorts, but the stem length was spot on and the bike frame size was spot on. So I was just like, how? It's amazing. That is cool. And I'm, I'm going to use it to get my presenter bike as well. Okay, right. You hold on there. I'm just going to quickly run back and just get measured up, okay? I'll see cool. you later, yeah. all right? See you in a bit. And finally, check out this from Boa and Mips. So a Mips liner inside of a helmet is designed to reduce any rotational impact in the unfortunate incident of a crash. And then Boa, well, they are used to adjust and fasten your shoes onto your feet. So by putting it into the helmet, essentially you can have a 360 degree uh, adjustment of the retention of the helmet, as well as getting that MIPS liner fully adjusted to your head. I think that's a great little bit of tech, and I think in the future, quite a few companies will be integrating that into the helmet, as currently, nobody actually does that with a MIPS liner. Well done. Anyway, more tech for you next week. Competition time. We've got two lucky winners of the Topi Pack Go X bike boxes. First up, Richard Mitten of Great Britain, and next up, Mick Stewart of Australia. Congratulations, we'll be in touch very shortly to arrange the shipping of those bike boxes. Happy traveling. Last week, I inducted the Royce Titanium Bottom Bracket, and this week, it's time for something which was revolutionary at the time and was used by so many pro riders. It was an alternative to look clipless pedals and also toe clips and straps. It's time for the time range of TBT pedals. Now these pedals were known for the huge amount of float that there were, so essentially allowing your feet just to have that travel and movement to eliminate any sore knees. When I moved to them from toe clips, it was basically like riding on ice, but without the slippiness. So what was the downside of them? Well, there was the weight of them. So the lightest pair came in at 351 grams and the cleats, 102 grams a pair. The cleats were made of brass. Now certainly the biggest benefit of these pedals was how close you could get to the spindle of that pedal. So your cleat to the actual center of that spindle was just 8.5 millimeters, which at the time nobody was close to. Sadly though, they did go into decline, which it's a real shame because they were so iconic for quite a number of years. Now, remember as well to leave me your suggestions for the Wall of Fame down there in the comments section, and who knows, maybe I'll pick yours. Last week, we put head to head that brand new Cannondale System 6 Aero, and it was up against the Argon 18 of Jakob Fuglsang. Quite contrasting, but interesting nonetheless. So the winner with 61% of the votes was the Cannondale. So, well done, Cannondale. Now this week, we've got two officially released aero bikes head to head. So first up is that brand new Specialized S-Works Venge from the Sagan collection in that kind of teal, glittery paint job. And it's up against the Trek Madon disc of Trek Segafredo in that white pearlescent finish with the red detailing. You know the score by now. Vote up there in the top corner. And next week, we will reveal the results and have two more head to head. It's now time for the Bike Vault, where you submit your photos to us and we rate your bike either nice or super nice. How do you submit them? Using the email address on screen right now. Now, many of you commented last week on how I rated the bikes. I was having a little drink whilst I was at the Tour de France. Sadly, the customs officer returned the bell of doom to me. So anyway, let's crack on then, shall we, with this week's submissions. First up, Darren Dunn from Derbyshire in the UK, and this is Darren's Botechia. An absolute stunner, right? I mean, check it out. He has had it refurbished, a full Campagnolo Super Record group set, or I think it's Super Record anyway. Uh, we've got ourselves some Campagnolo Omega tubular rims, Vittoria tubular tires, Delta brakes added on, Chinelli bar and stem. Look at those deep drop bars. Uh, a regal saddle, spare tubular as well, tucked underneath, and check out those. Those are those time pedals I mentioned earlier. That bike, there is no other way to describe it than super nice. So you're gonna get a ring, a ring of my bell there, Darren, because that is an absolute beauty of a bike. Moving on then, what have we got? We've got a Pinarello Dogma F8. Uh, this bike belongs to Dean Teifel, and he's from Swindon in the UK. That's another beauty. 
I mean, that bike, it's got everything. It's got gun wall tires on those Campagnolo wheels. At least I think they're Campagnolo. Yeah, they are. It's got the 3G rear wheel. Uh, we've got a, quite a cool saddle bag tucked away nicely underneath the saddle. And what does it for me are those deep drop bars, fluorescent yellow bar tape, okay, Shimano R8000 Ultegra group set. Yeah, that's another super nice. Nice one. Oh, wow. Mark Jones, Lancashire. Uh, this is his Cessini, and that's made of uh, 953, or is it, Colum I think it's Columbus XCR actually. Yeah, Columbus XCR stainless steel, Campagnolo super record. It's got Edco carbon wheels, Veloflex tires. That is a beauty. You don't see many Cessinis, believe it or not, I have one, one of the few. Uh, and get this, it weighs 6.8 kilos on the dot. So that just goes to show that steel isn't heavy necessarily. Uh, yeah, it's another super nice. Nice one, Mark Jones. Moving on, Rainer Saggers. Another one here from Lancashire. Uh, this is the De Rosa SK Pinaferina Shimano R8000. That's a beauty. Just look at the backdrop as well. I don't know. I hope. Well, I'll tell you what, Rainer. I hope you didn't ride into that barrier or that wooden um, that bit of wood in the background because you appear to have snapped it in half. Uh, nonetheless, that bike, it does come from the Pinaferina uh, design house there in Italy. It's one of the beauties out there. But you don't see very many of those at all. That. Another super nice. Oh, last one. And could it be a super nice? Who knows? Right, Roger Watt of Vancouver. This is a 1984 Cinelli Super Corsa with Campagnolo's 50th anniversary group set. We've got a roll saddle, the Campagnolo Aero water bottle, the gum lever hoods, deep drop bars, that, that classic red colour of those Cinellis. Campagnolo decal there on the top tube. Oh, it's an absolute beauty. It's an absolute, oh, there's nothing more to say other than, you've guessed it, I'm gonna ring it five in a row. I didn't think it was possible, but it has been this week. You remember as well to send in your photos using the email address on screen right now. Include your name, where you come from, some details about the bike, and importantly, a good quality photo of that bike. And who knows, maybe you will go into the bike vault. So there we are, it's almost time for the end of the show, but don't worry, there is heaps more great videos coming up for you in the next week. So keep a close eye out and make sure you subscribe to the GCN channel. And if you've not already clicked that notification bell, make sure you do so that you don't miss a single video that we put out. And also remember to like and share this video with your friends, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to, to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we have a whole heap of different goodies for you to check out. And now for a couple more great videos, this time the latest and greatest and hottest, the most aero and lightweight tech from the Eurobike show over there in Germany. Click down here and click down here.